What is up my friends? Welcome to this video. In this video, we are gonna talk about Russia joining the CIPS, SIPS, or Cross-Border Interbank Payment System, or China Interbank Payment System. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about uh, Russia and its recent gold purchases, and really just what seems to be international disagreement played out through monetary policy. So it would appear that right now, a lot of countries are really shoring themselves up with different options in case things go this way or that way which I think at the end of the day is smart. And I think a lot of people are blowing these moves out of proportion and they're acting like every single one of these moves is the end of the world. I don't think that's the case. I just think that countries are being countries and banks are being banks. And when they start to not trust each other, they will make moves, quick moves, to make sure that they shore themselves up for any sort of recession. So if you like this sort of thing, tune in. If not, then tune out and check out uh, other videos on the channel. But that is what we're gonna talk about. Let's dive into it. Okay, so let's Let's define this really quick in case you didn't know that this was a thing, which um, I didn't. Okay, it's called the Cross-Border Interbank Payment Systems, China Interbank Payment System for short. It is China's SWIFT. It originally launched in 2015 off the back end of the Chinese Yuan getting accepted into the IMF's SDR basket, which was the basket of currencies, okay? It seemed like right after this happened, they launched SIPs, and then in the beginning, they had 19 Chinese banks, and they had 176 indirect participants, which cover six countries continents and 47 countries and regions. March 25th, 2016, they signed an MOU, which is a memorandum of understanding between two bilateral or more parties with SWIFT, with mutual understanding of deploying SWIFT as a secure, efficient, and reliable communication channel for SIP's connection with SWIFT's members, which would provide a network that enables financial institutions worldwide to send and receive information about financial transactions in a secure and standardized and reliable environment. If that that wasn't confusing enough. It just means that the two integrated to allow SIPs to be a cross-border payment system and still work within the SWIFT system. Most people don't know this, but look at look at SWIFT here for a second. The amount of products that they have is insane. So if you just take a quick look, like there's a sizable amount of products or solutions that are under the SWIFT umbrella. SWIFT is a lot more than people realize. Okay, SWIFT is all the KYC stuff that you see in crypto. They own that. They're getting into facial recognition, name screening, RMB tracking. These are all things that are sold as safety and security for cross-border payments. Beyond that, who knows where that data is getting used and what it's getting sent to. That's for another conversation. And so anyways, that's SIPS, okay? So what just happened? Russia signed a deal with SIPS, but Russia itself has its own version of SWIFT as well. It seems like a lot of countries do. And let's not forget that the, the interesting dynamic here between China and Russia is that they're really seeming to do more and more together. This isn't their first business dealing together. They're actually doing quite a bit together. They had started the SCO, which I brought up before, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and they merged with the Eurasian Economic Union, or the EAEU, under this whole One Belt, One Road initiative. And so they've got this all this business dealing over here with these organizations, which there's so many now, the UN organization for this, the organization for that, there's a good 15, 20 that all end up being like a G7 to G20 hangout, right? And that's about it. That's all they become. But this SCO really seems to be focusing on the Belt and Road Initiative. We have Italy just signing with the Belt Road Initiative uh, with China just last week. That created a little bit of ripple and drama, of course, but this isn't the first thing thing that China and Russia have teamed up on. So Russia actually has its own as well. Like I mentioned, its own, I guess, SWIFT version. So their version is called the SPFS, which is System for Transfer of Financial Messages. This was in response to a threat from the United States that they were going to cut off Russia from SWIFT. They went and developed this. The first system transaction involved a non-bank enterprise was made by Russia Major Oil in December 2017. Now 500 participants are all involved with the SPFS. Again, I just see this as countries kind of shoring themselves up for doubt and lack of trust. And beyond that, I don't know anything. And that's really all I can see. That's what the data is saying. Russia International Gold Reserves on the uptick. U.S. Treasury Securities Foreign Holders, Russia, on the downtick. 
Okay, you seen that? Pretty simple. Here's the story uh, just the other day, back on the 28th. Russia buys another 1 million ounces of gold. So that brings Russia's uh, total reserves to 2,149 tons, making it the fifth largest gold holder. Okay, so here's another look at it. Reserve managers decreased the share of USD reserves, equivalent of a 50 to $55 billion in reserves sold, according to Goldman Sachs, IMF data. So now that we covered the Russia piece, now I wanted to go through some of the, um, some more of the SIPs. China is taking steps to expand its financial markets and internationalize the RMB Chinese currency. Beijing has enjoyed remarkable success in its efforts. The IMF agreed in November 2015 to include the Chinese currency in its basket of SDRs. I brought this up, special drawing rights. The RMB joined the US dollar, UK pound, EU dollar, and Japanese yen as major reserve currencies in October 2016. On the back end of that is when the SIPs was created, okay, as I mentioned. So here's where I reference that from. What we're seeing is that, you know, China as a whole is and its currency is getting more and more popular and they have the advantage that they have the one belt road initiative that they can easily bring other countries on board with which essentially signs these other countries up for these different organizations these different un like organizations like the sco so people's bank of china is leading the sips initiative coordinating with 19 chinese and foreign banks directly and 38 chinese banks and 138 foreign banks as indirect participants now this looks like nothing in comparison to how many partners XRP is working with and Ripple and RippleNet and all the different sub brands of the Ripple entity itself. That's way more impressive as a cross-border uh, solution than what we see with some of these. But digital currencies and digital assets haven't quite picked up and been run with yet by any country. There's a lot of countries testing it out, a lot of countries thinking about it, but I think we're going to see some interesting things happening here because there's now three or four different SWIFT versions that I'm aware of. I didn't know that before based upon different countries. And we have digital currencies, cross-border digital currencies like XRP, which are just primed for the pump to step in and help with cross-border payments, especially with settling in four seconds on average transaction time. That is a very quick transaction. Okay, so there you have it, my friends. Uh, this piece of news, I wouldn't say it's good or bad. It just further proves the point that right now countries are not trusting each other and banks are not trusting each other. That is not a great indicator because we saw that happen before in the 2007 to 2009 crisis. They started to shore themselves up and banks started to trust each other less and less. If you stack that with some of the other pieces that we've seen, some of the stuff I talked about with certified checks in the past, some of the things that I talked about with the low balances that banks are now keeping, it would fit the storyline that, and most people are talking about this now, that there is a global economic slowdown and that things in the United States on the ground in the streets are much different than what experts and talking heads are saying on TV. So there you go, my friends. Take it as you will. That's all I've got for you. If you like this video and you want to support us, click the thumbs up button. It does so much for our content, gets it in more feeds, more people get to see it, and obviously share the message. If you want to go above and beyond that and share, great, I would love that. And if this is the first time to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell notification, place a comment below if you got something to say. Be on the lookout, my friends. More videos dropping soon. Bye. Thank you.